So if the light is com coming from the upper left, I am going to draw the core shadow to the right of center. So when I draw the core shadow, I'm going to use a 4B. And let me use the pencil that is all woodless so I can get the job done a little faster. And I am going to make my shading using these kind of curved lines, similar to how I put in the core shadow for the, the cylinder. But this time, instead of it being the same with the core shadow, it's going to start getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier until it turns into almost like a single line up here. Maybe I'll make the core shadow a little thicker than I than I have. So it looks like a the the different areas of value on a cone are going to look like little skinny triangles. But lines will be slightly curved. Okay? Everything to the right of the core shadow, we're going to make a little bit lighter and so that we can get rid of this pencil line and blend it into some shading. I'm using the 4B pencil still, but I'm going to press on it a little less hard, maybe leave some more space between my pencil lines. I could still use curved lines if, if I wanted to, and that would be a good idea. Go back and put some curvy lines in there. Now I'm going to switch to a 2B pencil, and I'm going to make the light middle tone to the left of the core shadow. So just using a hard pencil, a harder pencil, will make it look a little lighter, but ease up on the pressure uh, on the pencil point as well. You have to do a kind of combination, or if you press too hard, you might be kind of compensating for the, the lighter color, and you might end up making it as dark as the dark middle tones. So you want this side to be a little bit lighter. If it ends up being the same as that, uh, we can erase it up. But always keep your areas of shading uh, looking like triangles because the surface area, the cone itself is getting smaller and smaller. The little areas of highlights, the different kind of zones of value also are getting smaller and smaller as well. Over here you're going to have a, an area of highlight so I'm going to remove some of this pencil here and and then in order to hide this pencil line I'm going to go in with a HB pencil that is this woodless pencil here and I'm going to put a little shading from this this pencil line edge here over toward the center I'll go like this and try to throw some shading on there it's kind of small here So we'll do all our blending uh, after we throw all the value areas down, throw all the pencils just onto the paper. Um, also, we could do the shadow after because we might smudge everything. Uh, we could put some 2B pencil up here and put a little graduated background here and go from dark to light.
try to match the shading on this side with the shading on going on on this side on the right side blend the core shadow area so I'll go back and forth in a curving motion then you're going to go in here where the middle middle dark values are right here Then we're gonna go over here where the light medium value is. And here my core shadow looks the same as my dark medium value, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna lighten that back up. We can lighten it up, correct that with a um, kneaded eraser. Just lighten it up. The kneaded eraser is great because the kneaded eraser uh, just can lift a, a, a layer, just a little thin layer of pencil at a time. The harder you press down upon it while you're erasing, the more it's going to erase. So it gives you a certain degree of control over your erasing. So you can kind of rub up and down too if you don't want to see any of your uh, pencil strokes. Now the decision is, should it make the core shadow darker or make the medium dark a little bit lighter? We do have to put in a little bit of reflected light right here. So I'm going to shape my kneaded eraser into a cone shape and just erase up an area of reflected light. That's the light that bounces off the table or the white tablecloth onto the darker half of the cone or whatever object you're shading at the time. You're gonna kind of smooth it a little bit, working it up a little bit more. Now we're coming over here and we are lightening up our highlight. And we're just using the kneaded eraser, bring that up. Uh -huh. It's a blender. I think I am going to make my core shadow a little darker. I'll use a little 6B pencil. That's the darkest um, pencil that I have. But I've seen 10B and, and higher. I think I have seen a 12B out there. So if you want to get those things for your own drawings, you can. Let's now shade um, the shadow here. So directly underneath the cone, I'm going to make the darkest value in the whole drawing. That's the umbra or the darkest portion of the shadow. It's called the umbra.
I'm just using lighter and lighter pressure with just the same 6B pencil to, to have the shadow go uh, lighter and lighter. Maybe I'll start from blending the lighter, lighter areas first. That would be kind of a smarter way of doing things. And then blend up to the medium dark areas and finally the dark, dark areas of the shadow called the umbra. Okay, so what we're going to do is also blend the background. Make that look a little smoother, and then we'll clean up everything with an eraser. And using the ruler as a mask, we'll clean up all our edges. And use the same technique that we used when we were cleaning up the edges of our form uh, when we did the, the cylinder. the drafting brush, if there's any kind of larger erase, uh, eraser dust pieces, just brush it away. 